see Shook and Frocken work together early on, camp the mid lane. If Xpeka falls behind in this lane here, he's gonna be in big, big trouble. And if Frog decides to run teleport as well, he might be able to follow him around. But now he's not on the teleport, he still wants some even, like, he wants even more kill pressure and lane pressure at the moment. I wonder if they were trying to bully him into Tristana and Reckless has just said no. Of course, they always knew that Vayne was a possibility for Reckless. It's a champion he has been very good on. Yeah, yes, insane KD on the Vayne, the Pentakill against Copenhagen Wolves as well, but it's not gonna be a good lane for Fnatic here, so they have to force the lane swap. And we often see when Fnatic have to force the lane swap, they invade into your jungle, they place like four wards deep inside your jungle, one between the two towers as well in the bottom lane or the top lane, depending on where they want to go. And then they try and spot where the enemy dual lane is going and swap around it here. So Fnatic need to get the lane swap going, which can be a bit annoying when you're against an Alistar, who's one of the best top laners at roaming around and ganking early. They've done a lot of diving in those scenarios as well, when they've, though, had the likes of Thresh or Morgana in there. Zillion's going to make it a little bit harder to actually lock someone up under that tower to finish him off, but excited to see Reckless as Vayne had a 65 KDA on that coming into playoffs. Let's see if he can go as crazy on it today. Yeah, some big stats, a lot of big champions for everyone involved. How do you guys at home feel about these lineups? Tweet us hashtag allwin or hashtag FNCWin for Fnatic. Two at LOL Esports and we'll see what you guys think because this is a tricky one. The balance of yeah. power, could we see it shift to Alliance? Fnatic have won this three times running. Nobody else in Europe has won the LCS. It's just going to be so important in this game for Fnatic. Every time Reckless plays Vayne, they invest a lot of farm, a lot of kills into him, or a lot of gold. They have to do the same here, because he has to be the carry late game together with Xpeka, the two damage threat, uh, threat. They've run it before, has backfire, but also worked out. Oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game one underway. In here at Gamescom, in front of a packed crowd. Alliance starting out as the blue team. Tabs on your screen there. He was in this situation last year for Lemon Dogs. He lost in this final against Fnatic this time. Fnatic, of course, as the red team with the slight change of Reckless coming in in 2014 as the AD carry. Can he be the man to take Fnatic a step further at Worlds? They're going to go regardless. Can they get further than third place? Will they take that number one seed once again? And we see a lot of focus on the late game as well for Fnatic with this comp. Pick potential, and you have to go late to be honest, because Alliance in these mid games fights should be stronger. Once Taps complete his Trinity Force, he's going to be very, very strong. Froggen, I expect him to go out last second item if we actually do see Alliance look for these team fights. And then he can just dive in towards Xpeka or Reckless, try and kill them. Of course, he has to kill them twice, which is the annoying part about this support Zillion. But at the same time, Fnatic needs to get the lane swap. Speaking of the lane swap, Fnatic actually sent Reckless right down to the bottom side of the map. Tabs was there as well, and they basically saw each other, put a ward down a piece, and then actually moved away. We also saw that Alistair started working his way down towards this bottom side of the map. So with Tabs in tow, is this going to be something a little bit tricky from Alliance here at level one? Well, seems like we have Yellows are sitting in the mid lane now. We have down his bottom lane, Reckless Recall, he's done this before where he runs down to the lane, just stands there, and then he waits to see, okay, do we spot the enemy dual lane, then we do Recall instantly. Notice what Alliance is doing, they're doing the same mind game Rocket did, where they send Wicked into the lane, so now Fnatic actually believes it's going to be a 2v1 down his bottom lane and a lane swap, and Reckless is staying in the lane. But behind Wicked, we have Taps and Nif waiting, so it's going to be standard lanes, and we can just teleport to the top lane. Actually going to be a decent amount of damage here onto Reckless as well. Tab wasn't quite close enough to follow up with that. And of course, Nami wasn't quite there either. So they do the damage to Reckless. Wicked's going to TP top, but we already saw the recall coming in from Reckless. And Yellowstar is still in the mid lane harassing Froggen here with a bomb. So they're still going to try and put those two men against Wicked up top. Just again, mind games by Alliance. We saw the same trick used by Rocket here and we saw the same reaction from Fnatic. Instant recall from Reckless. Go to the top lane. Wicked has been able to pick up some farm, get some experience now. He will push the lane down. If he can push it into the tower in time, he might be able to reset it and still be able to get some experience. Seems like he can't do it and therefore Reckless should be able to freeze it up in his top lane here and then force Wicked to roam around. But it's Shook that's going to lose out. He's going to be three buffs to the good for Cyanide. He's going to come around and that blue buff not there. Instead he'll take the wolves away and start off there, so he's going to try and keep his experience flowing despite the lack of that big buff. Bottom lane, Tabs is actually shoving the wave 
fairly heavily. Just keeping it outside of range. Yellow Star puts a bomb down. It's going to be so annoying yeah. early on for Wicked here. So taps down his bottom lane, actually has to push it into the tower simply because he was pushing from the start. He got it reset the first time. Now he has the cannon minion from Fnatic side and he can actually decide if he wants to freeze it. So he already pushed it into the tower, bounced the wave, reset it, and now it's going to push down towards him. So he can also freeze it together with Rectus up in the top lane. Both AD carries seem fairly happy. And now we're going to see the roam. Shot going to move towards this mid lane. Is he going to be able to do anything up there? Preke is decently far up there, but it looks like he's just going to go back into his jungle, keep the farm going on on that front. And there he's Foggen again going a little aggressive out on towards X Preke, who pulls the red card. A little bit low on mana there, but shouldn't have too much of a problem in getting that all back with the use of his blue cards. Meanwhile, Soas and Cyanide teaming up. They're going to start moving towards mid, or will they go into the enemy jungle? They're going to have a look at mid lane for now. Oh, Froggen's playing it safe. While this is all happening, Nif is actually rotating, gone up towards the top. So he's joined Wicked just to hold this lane against them. And obviously Tabs, he's getting free farm on down that bottom. Yeah, and look how much farm Wicked is picking up now because Nif is here to help him. Shook was running up as well in case someone from Fnatic was there to try and pressure Wicked and Nif. So Wicked can pick up all the farm here. He will share the experience. But it's better than the Malka running around the jungle at the moment on 4CS. Oh, they're going to try and sneak around the backside. Tabs is completely unaware of this one. He's going to get slowed by the sapling, twisted in advance. Not going to be able to use. Cocoon will land, but Flash. Flash used by Tabs perfectly. Brilliant play. Flash and heal, actually. So someone is completely used up there by Tabs. And that's the danger. A little bit far up in his lane. No ward to actually spot anyone coming in behind him, and that means now that Soaz, similar to what we see with Wicked in the top lane in the presence of Nif, will now have a bit more time to farm up a bit, and he's actually fa uh, fallen a decent chunk of gold behind, to be honest, because of that in these early stages. And up at level four, of course, once he hits level six, that's when he's going to be feeling a lot more confident. And actually goes in for the attack towards Reckless. It was a simple headbutt and the, the old auto-attack trick as it goes through. And it's a lane now with double heal against Zillion, who's great at poking if there's no sustain. But uh, Yellows are not really able to poke Wicked and Nith down because they can just heal each other. And they can sit in this lane, keep farming. They're going to need the help of uh, Sana if they actually want to stop Wicked from farming in this lane. Tams tried to bait something out down the bottom, pretending to recall, but again, as you mentioned, Wicked wiping out this wave, double heals, counteracting the bombs. Of course, they're only really probably level one bombs from Yellowstar, so they're not going to do a great deal of damage. He hasn't exactly got a ability power stacked on him. Cyanide down in this bottom wave, trying to create a play maybe if Tams steps a little too far forward, but with that flash and heal already down, he's going to play this one very safe. And yeah, this is uh, the risky thing about the tactic form alliance with sending Nif in the top lane to lane with Wicked is that Taps is all alone and now there's two members from Fnatic down here potentially setting up for a kill. We actually do see Shook instantly reacting and saying okay I don't want to have a situation where my AD carry can't farm so I'm instantly going to run to this bottom lane and make sure he can pick up the farm he needs. And he needs behind those minion, that minion line as well not exactly in the most dangerous position as he just continues to farm it up and Shook has been spotted. They should realize that as well with the fact that Fnatic just instantly backed away from things. Nif also did just recall and then come down this bottom side of the map. And it looks like Nif going to spend a fair amount of time here moving around and trying to open up some opportunities elsewhere. Also worth mentioning now is that both mid laners have hit their level 6 mark and have the ultimates. Yeah, and we do also see Alliance place a pink ward around the dragon. They're trying to set up if they do see Reckless return to this top lane oh, after. It. That one missed, and that one missed. <laughs> Last one hit. Shook, you get a point. Yeah, Sidestepped all of that one. You saw Chum, the waters go out. That's going to be on a cooldown. It's a fairly quick one for Froggen, but I think they wanted to make that play and force the Dragon out. Instead, it's not going to happen. It will be a red buff return for Shook. Tabs in that bottom lane. Back in there, going towards that Trinity Force, while Reckless, now going back to the top lane, rain, is going to go towards, of course, that play the King. Yeah, and now with Reckless returning to this top lane, already wards placed by Alliance, they're pushing out the bottom lane into the tower. We can see them just go straight for Dragon. They do have to teleport on Wicked, he can join in. So it's going to be 5 versus 4 in favor of Alliance here. And you just see Taps and Nifta on this bottom lane, instant push it into the tower. So it opens up for the opportunity to go Dragon if they want to, and force Source to stay at least for a while on the tower to pick up the experience. Good damage on that tower right now. Half the hit points gone. Pingwood was not spotted by Fnatic this time around. It is 
in the old standards position in the death bush. Shook's going to head back, so we're not going to see a dragon just yet. Deep ward placed by Yellowstar over on the blue buff, which is up right now. We'll see whether they make any use of that one. Tabs burning down the damage on this hit point uh, tower, though. Yeah, we actually uh, saw that Fnatic realized that Alliance had got that ward in there. The same was done from both sides. So both teams do have vision around the dragon, or at least from uh, Alliance's side, it's on the ramp. They see Nif actually moving in to get that ward down that was placed just a few moments ago. And that could open things up here. Shook has now started to move back out of the base after previously recalling. Froggen is going to start to move in here as well. Reckless, it's worth knowing, along with Yellowstar, both on the top side of River. So Alliance should get this one down. And Yellowstar was actually hiding in the top lane. He didn't show himself for at least half a minute where Alliance were, okay, let's just recall. We don't have to take the Dragon when there can potentially be four members from Fnatic. And then as soon as Yellowstar showed himself and should return from base, instantly they just went in towards the Dragon. They knew they could take it. It could only be three members from Fnatic to try and defend. Easy Dragon. It is the trade you have to take. And so was beautiful dodge around here. Oh, Shook is there. Shook is there. Kicks him back to the tower. They might have enough damage. And Tab gets himself first blood. Now the top lane. Wicked's had to back away from this one because Fnatic stole away the blue buff. Now pushing the tower. It's going to be one apiece. And there was no ward. If you notice down here around the blue buff of Fnatic, there was no ward to spot Shook moving in behind Soas here. So he had no idea he was coming. And as soon as he appeared, easy kill for Alliance here. First one, Dragon will have to get this top tower here, but the bottom lane tower is very low as well. Reckless got a big wave in front of him there. Was just trying to let the tower burn through as much as he could. Tabs will take the bottom as well. So we get an exchange on that. And in terms of gold, it leaves Alliance with a lead. Not a massive one, though, at this point. Around about 700 gold, but Fnatic for now, not stopping. We're actually moving towards the inner turret, but both Alistair, who, by the way, has hit level 6 now, so has his damage reduction, plus Nif, who shouldn't be too far away yet. We can see his XP bar down in the bottom left. He will be hitting that within these next couple of minions. He's also got that sheen complete as well, so those headbutts are going to start beginning to do a lot of damage to the likes of Reckless and the other stuff. They stick around, which is why we're going to see them back away. Potentially, I would say go down bottom, but it seems they're heading for the mid lane turret. Well, so there's, I mean, Froggen can only clear the wave as he can actually jump into the minions, which you can't do if a lot of members are pushing onto a tower here. But there's already Nip and Shook staying around in case there's going to be a push from Fnatic. The main wave there, however, is actually going to be taps, which is not ideal. Unless, again, Froggen can jump into the minions. So not a lot of wave there from the combat. Whoa! Oh, that was beautiful. Yellowstar, and he's in a lot of trouble. Trying to speed up. Has to flash away. Tidal wave will come through. Yellowstar actually sidestepping that one. The fish is going to go on towards Sars. Froggen still wants Yellowstar, who uses the exhaust. But Tabs coming in range as well. He will flash in. And Tabs gets another one. In the meantime, Nip falling low. So has to be careful. Forward. Bubble was going to land on him. And that is a freebie. So has going far too deep. Wicked had TP'd in as well and just like that Alliance are gonna pick up kills left and right that was such a nice tidal wave by Nif here. he used it to block the entrance towards the blue buff here from Yellowstar so he was forced to run down towards the bottom lane where both tabs and Fogg couldn't chase him let's just see it again goes on to Yellowstar kick flash him and Yellowstar at this point he doesn't want to use the flash he wants to save it for the tidal wave or for the bubble use it on the bubble and then you see the tidal wave blocking the entrance here Yellowstar forced to run down to this bottom lane tabs joins in Froggen can chase him kill him and at the same time, Xpega pops his ulti here, wants to join in, but they're going for Nif and Source over chasing even though there's a teleport behind. The teleport also came out of Wicked. He joined in towards the pit, but was not required, so that was going to be on a cooldown. So, 3 0 early lead for Alliance. It's what they said in the opening feature, talking about how if Alliance do get ahead, they are very hard to stop their momentum as they push on through. And Frankly, it's been Fnatic's misplays, I think you could say, more than Alliance's great plays that put them in this situation. It was a, more of a kill of opportunity they were going to go for, but instead, now they're going to try to move on towards Frog, and it's just going to sidestep everything. And the thing is, if you look back to the semi final, Alliance versus SK Gaming, sounds strange to say, but SK actually had early game yeah. leads against them in every single of those four matches that they ended up playing in the semis. So this is a completely different alliance. We know them later on to be a team that is very, very good at closing out games that generally don't make mistakes and they will capitalize on their enemies' mistakes. So this is a real dangerous scenario for Fnatic to be in. And it's simply also because Fnatic, whenever they do play Vayne, 
they invest so much time and so much effort into getting Red Sage. He's going for a Wicked here. Let's see if he can pick up a kill. Maybe he does some true damage. Double ult he used. Wicked's ultimate is about to wear off, and Reckless may be able to get the chase on here. He's going to sidestep him round. He's in trouble. He will get the kill. And Reckless picks up the first for Fnatic. And Reckless is actually maxing his W here also for the true damage against Wicked. So the vein pick was a response to the expected Alistar from Alliance here. He didn't picture stun it, even though it was open, making it a little bit risky for him in the lake, and we're going to see how he can handle it. So very important he gets a kill, because again, this lane swap was all about him getting the farm. Now onto the top lane. Diving into towards Nip, he will throw down the tidal wave, but he's been separated from the rest of them. Shook and Tabs just trying to do damage to the side. Nip somehow still alive from this one. There is the shield, the kick from Shook as well, and they managed to save him. Shook is such a good listen play. He's just everywhere at the right Time. Nice save here. He was the guy who set up all the kills. He's been part of every single kill from Alliance. Reckless will be able to respond though and get this bottom lane tower. Get some more gold for Fnatic. Yes, yeah, the second tower of the game. Fnatic now leading in that stakes. Top and bottom taken down. Wicked returns. Look at this. Reckless cancels his recall. Ultimate not available to the wall. for Wicked. Wicked's Reckless ultimate not up either, but he didn't fancy it. Trinity Force has been completed by Wicked, but he's still sticking around. Not going to back away. Ultimate back off cooldown shortly. Wicked, yeah. He's like, nope, nope, not having any of this. Dragon's going to be coming up in a moment. They're going to move towards the mid lane. Good little ward steal as well. And Reckless, we saw a ping coming down onto the tri bush. They didn't have any vision there. They were worried, I think, that someone was about to come down there to support Wicked. And if Reckless had started things off, could have actually put himself in a bad scenario. Play it safe. Something that we're, we're used to, you know, Reckless is. Definitely develop more confidence, I think, in taking some riskier plays, but something like that is kind of typical reckless. You, I think nine times out of ten, we'll see him back off rather than risk a 1v1 yeah. without any vision. Yeah, it's just smart play. I mean, we do see some teams just go over aggressive, even though they don't know for anyone Whoa. else. Like expected here. Yeah, going straight in towards him. Has to pop the ghost, jump the waters, does not land, and Wicked should escape this one, but it may trigger the dragon. That's the mid laner without destiny. It's going to be up in a couple of seconds, though. So he's going to head back to base and then come straight back. He's just going to shove that wave in. Instead, they're going for the tower. The mid tower's on next to no health, so they should just trade this one. Okay, so again, Fnatic, they don't want to take any chance here. Both summoners used by Specky in the mid lane. Give up the dragon, trade it for tower, and once again, your Vayne is just sitting in this bottom lane and keep farming. Setting up here for a kill. No ult on Froggen, remember. He's gonna knock him into the wall. Nope. Nice drag. There's a repel coming. It's all about the cocoon, which lands onto him. Froggen will flash for the silver bolt. Final proc for work, and Reckless gets himself a second kill of the game. Always scary when these hyper carries that we've harped on about for both of these players get the kill. And funnily enough, his opposite number tabs is also sad at 3 0 0. Yep. They're going to be just as important, if not more so, than we thought in this game. And I really want to see how fast Reckless can actually kill Wicked in the late game, even though Wicked will pop his ulti because of the true damage from Reckless W. And just see if Wicked is actually able to stand in front of him by enough time for Tabs to do the same damage to Soas on the Maokai. Gonna be a big question in the late game here, but uh, definitely great stuff for both AD carries. The best in their position in Europe. Lich Bane, first item for Frog and Run. Omicom was picked up by Peke. He wants to burn through that cow if he gets a chance. Also, with the blue buff being picked up by them, Fnatic, you've got to feel, are reacting very well to Alliance's early lead right now. Now the battle is all about vision, and it's Fnatic that have the most wards down. It's been Yellow Star predominantly that is led throughout in terms of ward placements. So you've got to feel Fnatic may well have the advantage here. And just uh, credit to Fnatic again for the fact they don't pick a stupid fight here in the mid game where they're just waiting for Rectus to scale up, they're waiting for Expect to scale up as well. Like Twisted Fate needs to get items before he can really start doing damage in the late game. So they didn't take a risky dragon fight, instead traded for a tower, they take the safe option every single time and manage to pick up enough gold now. In this mid lane, a lot pushing in, four members. It's a big push as well, four of them there. We are going to see both Yellow Star and Cyanide start to come around, but I think it might be a little bit late. Tabs is going to just stick there. Auto attacks will be enough to take the tower. That was a nice, fast little push from Alliance. That was just brute force, like moving in four members. The minions died, they stayed on the tower and killed it, and nobody from Fnatic could react in time. It was enough just to expect it to clear it. That's a bomb which doesn't do too much. No, not a lot of damage. It's not really a scary bomb at no. the moment, but 
That's not what he's picked for. That ultimate it is indeed a lifesaver. So top lane shoved off. Wicked done enough to keep that one steady. Alliance. Well, they're thinking whether they're going to try and counteract here. Can they go towards that blue buff steel? May well be up shortly. Instead, they are all spotted out by that ward in the river. So Fnatic have full vision. Tried to be a scumbag there and stop the recall. Tabs. Frogger is indeed getting himself some free farm. These two teams, two mid laners, obviously both hold the records in farm. And they're keeping it going down that bottom lane. So everybody at the moment just trying to gauge themselves a bit of a position on the map. And notice how Fnatic, they just keep sending Reckless to the lane where Wicked is because he can kill him. He's going for him. He has red buff. There's no flash on Wicked. Oh, that's going to be real bad news. That Blade of the Rune King going to be used here once he does. In fact, oh, getting oh, ready to oh, Wicked been ripped to pieces. There is a TP oh. coming in. Oh, it was oh, out. TP wait. out. When you've got a condemn, your TP is just useless. Oh, Peke, they'll be chased out by Shook. There's the the King coming Star. in and he's finished off. Yellow Star will just trying to get in range for ulti, it didn't happen, so trade one for one, but once again, the kill goes over to Reckless here, he keeps looking for Wicked. Every time Wicked is sitting in the lane, he goes towards him. Look at the mid lane, you can see Alliance trying to take advantage of this one, shoving in. Frog and playing simple defender in the river, keeping two of them busy while the rest of the team try to shove up and create something, but so as is there, the defender of the tower. Oh, Chum the Waters thrown towards Yellowstar. Frog is going for this one. Lich Bane, Frog goes out. He's going to have to use that ultimate on himself, but how's he going to get out of this one? In comes the rest of the team. There's no escape. Surely Flash is available. Caught with the Acro Prison. Frog gets the kill. Nice little setup here. So baiting or forcing Fnatic to move through the river if they want to try and do stop the push. Let's just see the kill once again from Reckless. This is brilliant. Just wait for the Flash. Wicked goes in. He knows I can't really run from him. Instant Flash. The Q in. The boys didn't knock up. Saves the Condemn as well. Born until the boy actually came in. And... Oh. oh, actually, this top lane. Oh, Reckless, though. He chases a lot of people coming around, but the rest of the planet now joining in. Ignite is on Reckless. He tries to get away, but that's not enough. They trade one for one in the end, though. And it will be Peke managing to take out Shook. The remaining three of Fnatic there will simply back away. Alliance, I don't think, have enough to chase here with that ultimate from Frog and still down. Keep trading one for one. They trade towers, they trade objectives here. These two teams are so even at the moment. And it's all about getting kills in the 80 kills. I mean, look at Taps. Four kills picked up for him. Three kills for Reckless. Looking good for both of them. Or both mid laners. They want to join in. They want to be part of, uh, of the kills, but only being able to pick up one. Yeah, it's the meta that's not helping them right now. They want to be involved in everything, but good counterplay from both teams so far. Dragon up in. 37 seconds, Yellow Star once again doing his job, coming in, clearing out the pink wards, getting themselves some vision in and around it. Bottom lane is shoving in the favor of Fnatic, that will help out. Tabs is going to have to pick up this red buff and quickly go down, sweep out that wave that is pushing. That's going to give him a big chunk of farm. He's actually ahead at the moment on Reckless in terms of gold and farm. You can see just 1,200 gold ahead. That's a big, big difference moving in towards this dragon fight. Look at the items here from Xpec, he's going, going early magic resist, wants to make sure Frog can just one-shot him, but there's still the physical damage coming from the auto-attack from Taps. Well, of course, be some of the magic damage as well, but still, Xpec is playing very defensive with Phil. And it looks like this dragon is just going to be given away to Alliance. Fnatic Same not really there. getting involved, they're going to push that top lane. The question is, can they actually finish this tower off, or how much damage will they really do before Alistair gets in? He needs to send a second person up there, though, because of Yellow Star having his ultimate on cooldown. Reckless could dive him under the tower, and we've already seen what happens Sinai when they through. get involved. Cyanide is there. The pulverize comes down, but Wicked honestly can't do all that much. They're trying to actually kill off Soas here inside of the river. Shook and Froggen going to dive onto him. Ultimate running here. The fish will come out. Peke is going to join him from the side. He gets hit by the tidal wave. Oh, oh he has to flash from the bubble as well. Destiny is going to be popped. He's surely going to escape with that one. We also saw yellow star go down after Tabs came in to help. Didn't even pop his ult here. Actually just ended up dying two members from Alliance against three members from Fnatic. Managed to pick up a kill while the rest of Alliance is chasing Source. Second time already. He's been caught out of position and ended up dying. Let's see it again. Wicked is trying to do his best to keep Reckless and Yellow off the tower here. Then Tab joins in. Sanad is there as well. They go for yellow star. He has ulti. And decides not to use it. To use it. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe he even... I'm not sure if he spent the last of his mana actually on trying to speed himself and then he couldn't afford to pop the ulti and therefore ended up dying. But that was definitely the wrong uh, decision, especially because Sana was joining in to turn it around. Well, it's five kill 
Cogmore for Tabs nonetheless, and that's given the Blade of the Rune King completion. And look at that, the goal difference. It's been close. This is between the two AD carries, but it is Tabs that is once again stretched in the lead. This is the big fight between these two. Mid laners really haven't got going, and nor the top laners. They've been simple bystanders throughout this match so far. It's an 8 4 lead for Alliance in terms of kills. That, of course, equates to close to 4,000 gold. Still yet to get this turret in the top lane, but Cyanide's getting chased here. That's Chum the Waters lands that was perfectly. Fine. Blind Chum the Waters. Cyanide goes down. It's Froggy that takes it. Froggen. That was such a nice setup. He didn't have any ward in the bush and still managed to hit it onto Cyanide here. And now Lance pushing up four members in the mid lane. Wicked is pushing here. Source will be able to get the tower in the top lane because he's still fairly low. And Reckless once again wants a piece of the cow. Ooh. Play the Ruin King actually use Tumble. will bring him in closer, but actually backed away. And funnily enough, there's no one there to help him. He could have chased that one down. Alliance moving on towards that turret. Soaz is also doing the damage to that top inner turret. So it's going to be inner turrets traded here between the two teams. Obviously, Cyanide has a man going down in that last fight before it actually happened. And now it looks like Target's reckless. Well, Froggen's going to come across. I think he, yeah, tumbles away. He should be safe. He's got the support of Yellow Star just around the side. So Alliance trying to close the net. Didn't want to go too deep on it, though. So very, very close this game still. Despite the 4,000 gold advantage, we have yet to see a big full-on brawl, a big brawl in team fight. The AD carries yet to actually clash either. Yeah. They pretty much stayed the distance from one another. But they don't really have to group up because, again, Fnatic, they know they're a bit weaker here in the early to make games, so don't want to take any risky fights. They give the dragons to a line, trade it for towers, and then AD carries has basically just been looking for the enemy top laner and just keep going towards them and try and kill them. It's paid off because, again, look at the kills. Two deaths for Wicked, died for Wicked twice. We had three deaths for Source. He was ganked the first time, then he got caught out of position twice, ended up dying. And Froggen as well, been uh, picking up some kills lately, so looking very good for him on the face and take notes over power. Our last second item here, so Alliance can look to team fight. We can see Froggen dive in towards the back down of Fnatic, pop the hour last, wait for his E to be ready, and then jump out again. Interested to see how that all works out for him going forward. Reckless once again has been sent up to this top lane to farm and push that one down. He needs to be really careful. We see Alliance now moving in towards the enemy jungle. And this is where those wards become all the more important the further that we go on when, to be honest, both both teams have great pick potential that you're going to fall foul to if you don't have vision. Especially also, the weird thing actually is, Fnatic has the resilient, but we haven't seen Yellowstar use a single ult yet. Even though there's been all these like single target picks where he's been able, or he's actually been around for most of them, but he was just never in a position to either get the ulti off, or he was out of mana, or just didn't time it correctly. So the Zillion pick so far hasn't really paid off for Fnatic. Okay, yet to get his split push on because he cannot compete with Froggen if he was to face him. He would get taken down. See Froggen going back down towards that bottom wave, gonna keep it pushing in their favor, Reckless. Sneaking across the side. This time around, though, there is two members of Alliance there. Are they going to try to go for this one? There's wards from Alliance. They will spot them. Cyanide will get spotted coming around the side. Destiny pops. Where's he going? Mid lane wants to lock on towards Nif, but a great Aqua Prism. Deep, deep dive coming out of Fnatic here. The wave from Nif. Is it enough to get him away? Yes, it is. And the rest of Alliance are going to close the net on towards them. Chum the water's fired out. Not quite in range. Off the side, we're going to see the battle oh. of the AD carries. Tabs is coming around the side. We missed we can miss the ball rise. Got then he gets it with the headbutt. Becky now focused out there. The ultimate running from Wick is going to be enough to prevent all the damage on his outclass. It's going to do nothing. The Zillion ultimate will protect him briefly. He's got flash up in a second. Not going to be enough. Tabs gets the kill. This could be Baron here. I mean, Fnatic or Alliance instant moving towards the Baron. Two members dead. Source is alive with full HP and Reckless and Yellowstone in this mid lane here. Will they actually go in and try and stop it? Froggen is recalling. There's only four members from Alliance here. Makes it very dangerous. Nif is still low. It's got to be reckless, surely, to be the hero in this scenario. There is a ward coming over the top, so Fnatic know for sure that that Baron has been started. They turn around, going to go towards Yellowstar. He will flash straight off. Tab's not got much mana here. That could actually really affect what he can do damage-wise. But the Baron is still being done. Alliance really holding on to that one. Cyanide is coming back into it. I think the Baron, though, is going to go down here, and it does go to Alliance. And this was Fnatic. Trying to set up a play here, they want to kill Nif in the mid lane. He survived, just 
rolled again. Yeah, so Tilbar coming in from Xpec here, and Source is in the mid lane as well. Meanwhile, they're fighting here. Sanat drops fairly low. He's gonna be the first target Lance actually wants to kill here. Reckless managed to escape, but his ulti is gone here. In this mid lane, three members from Fnatic now running, or four members, sorry. Sanat is so low. Wicked goes in, misses the Q, but he will get it with the headbutt and the auto attack in the air. Kills him. No ulti used by Yellowstar, by the way. He saves it. Pumps it on his Pega when it's way too late anyway. He's gonna die. Hoping maybe at flashing time, but it would have been easy for a line to follow him and kill him. Wicked didn't miss the pulverize at the end there, though, so just to point <laughs> that one out. <laughs> they were equally as easy, in my opinion. He was right at the front of him, but. He got the head one anyway. He, he got, got the kill. Yeah, he got the important one. Ooh. And this is risky. His first kill as well. Reckless down on this bottom side. That that's Trump. They were trying to set a trap down the bottom there, and Alliance might be able to just jump straight at the mid lane. Here. Tabs is actually getting red buff though, so it's going to delay them for now. But Reckless is sticking around. I think he wants to try and rush down towards that inner turret while the rest of Alliance are up in the top half of the map. Fnatic is in a situation where they need to try something desperate, even though there's Baron on the side of the pushing. They have to do something here. They're going for this tower. Want to force Alliance to recall, but they're just going to trade for top tower. Oh, this is going dangerous. down to defend it. Yeah, there's, there's recalls coming in as well on the top side of the map. So Fnatic going to get this inner turret. Tab's already there. Nip had walked down. So they trade one for one, although it's outer for inner. If you uh, really want to look at the semantics there, Wicked, though, is going to have some free time. And a big, big wave with him as well, which he can obviously keep healing up. Stop a couple more uh, turret hits actually getting kills onto those minions. And I think there's enough of them there to just finish off this tower. Nice little uh, push at the end from Alliance. The Fnatic has or have given up so much gold to Alliance through the Dragons. They're constantly giving up kills as well. I mean, we see Tabs, you had five kills very early on in the game. Frogan started running around getting all the kills, so he, both teams with their pick comp style here has gone in favor of Alliance. And then we also, like, if you look at the items for Fnatic, the fact that Xpeki felt like he was forced to go early magic resist means he doesn't have a lot of damage just yet. It also means if we do get the five versus five, it's all about Reckless doing the damage, which is not gonna be enough. And if you do look at the late game scaling, well, Alliance, you have Fist and Taps as well gonna scale great into late game. The only difference is they don't have a Maokai, but they have the 70% damage reduction Alistar instead. So it's not like he, it's not even like Alliance is in a worse position going into the late game. And they are so far ahead now. Looking to siege up on this tower. Well, with the range of Cogmore, it may well be able to get that poke damage on towards them. A wicked though, could he get jeweled off at the side here? No, nope. Frogan's gonna join him. The rest of Alliance rotate around, and that's another inner turret being picked up for Alliance. That will be their sixth of the game, and now it's just the base that they are staring at. Can they unlock the shell that Fnatic have? Can they start? knocking on the door. We're only 31 minutes in. It's a pretty fast game I mean, in all honesty. And this is a pretty much the best of five series beginning that we really wanted to see. Both these yeah. teams really are looking tight. A lot of action, a lot of focus on the AD carries, getting the kills, doing well. And we again, we haven't actually seen a straight up five versus five. It's just been picks and small fights everywhere on the map. And then Alliance, of course, pick up the Baron in the end where Fnatic went too over aggressive. They wanted to kill Nif in the mid lane, completely backfired. Alliance going for, towards the bot lane now. Yep, just gonna swing straight around, do some damage to this one. The middle turret already down to half. There's the bubble on towards the side. They're gonna oh, follow gonna through. Go. The ultimate from Zillion was you, so that's not gonna be there for these next few moments. Frogan actually going pretty deep, but the tower nonetheless will fall down. So, first inhibitor now go in the favor of Alliance. They should be able to just go straight to the mid lane and finish off the tower there. Amazing stuff, honestly. Alliance, dominant control. All they needed to do was pick off that one target. Look at Taps, not messing around, using that range of Cogmore, and he is just burning down the towers and sidesteps the cocoon, and that was enough. That was all they needed to do. Quick Aqua Prison comes out from Nif and just forces Alliance to go forward. And Fnatic now, they're going to have to deal with this. All Alliance needs to do, just delay. They've got the double heal. They can sustain through a lot of this damage. And now you can see Super Minions coming in. The wave comes through. Final wave with the fish. Wicked pops his ulti. So us dives into the middle of them. He's going to go down. The rest of the team don't really follow up. Shook on a bit too deep though. Gets condemned against the wall. Oh. Managed to get away though. The shield comes in. No and way. now Peke being ripped to pieces by Tabs. He will get away and be able to heal. But they're surely going to lose the inhibitor. turret. Will the inhibitor fall as well? I think our lines are done for this push. And Tabs was just completely untouched in this fight here. He even went for early Banshees because well, who's gonna dive towards him? It's gonna be Source, it's gonna be Xpecker. 
and that's magic damage. So early magic resist here, they won't be able to kill him. They're gonna need regular speed there, but he can't do it. There's gonna be a cow in his face, there's gonna be Lisa in his face, and Froggen is just looking to try and kill him every single team fight. So Fnatic don't have anyone who can dive in, kill taps, they can place a bomb and stop the recoil just to be annoying though. Yeah, just annoying, it means Fnatic can move in and clear out the walls, but look at this, the play from Shook. So Alliance here, looking for the dive because there's no ulti for Yellowstar just yet. They go into Cyanide, he managed to stay alive, and Source actually goes into the back line here, goes for Nif, he stays alive as well, like nobody's going down, and then Shook in the very end, flash over, uses the safeguard just to survive in the very end, and everyone stays alive. So, so close, and taps from behind the wall, almost picking himself up another couple of kills right after that. We've actually got Dragon in less than half a minute's time, and looks like Alliance want that last bit of cash injection before they end up going towards what could be a final push. There is Blue Buff started. Shook comes in and says, hang on a minute, don't think you're getting that. That's going over to Froggen. Get back in your base and defense. <laughs> Slide through with the urgent strike. Dragon is up in two seconds, but they don't care about that. I think Baron may well be the next focus. Red Buff looks like it's up. Tams wants that. i will help him out. There's the Dragon. They're going over to take that one. And Fnatic simply on defensive duties. They need to prevent those super minions on the side because if they're allowed to shove up, that would buy free time for Alliance to just go straight up to Baron while the super minions beat on the Nexus turret. So Soaz clearing those out. Wreckers are going to help them. And then they just need to make fast tracks to Baron, it seems, because Alliance they're going to shove this wave and move straight for it. And there's some good defensive wards by Fnatic. They bought the time while Fnatic, oh, by the Alliance were doing Dragon. You just place a few wards here. But it's not enough. They don't really have the option to place enough because it's, Alliance will instantly go into the Baron Pit here, take full control of it, force Fnatic away, and then they can start cleaning the wards anyway. Yellowstar trying to do what he can to get a few wards. Just around, trying to dodge around the pink wards. And see if he can keep it at least to spot if Alliance does start the Baron. Sanad is great at smiting. He does a flash, he does a smile at this point, so he could potentially go for a steal. But there, uh, it seems like Fnatic want to try and force Alliance away from this Baron pit and make them run to the mid lane. Yeah, by doing that middle in a turret, which they do manage to get down. However, they need to be careful because the furthest lane away from the Baron itself Ooh, is pushing for him with super minions. So they've got to make a decision here very shortly to descend Soaz back, who does have teleport to defend Lance this base. Alliance can just push middle. Fnatic are out of position. You can see all of them going to recall. It might be too late, at least to save this in here. In the bottom left, you can see that the super minions did get through. Already taken one next, so it down to half. They're going straight through. Inhibitor will go down. Super minions working their way through. Alliance rotate, ready and waiting for that respawn. They're going to get the second inhibitor down. Sinai caught out. They're going to go aggressive. Fnatic trying to catch on towards the Reckless. Pops the ultimate. He's looking for Wicked, but Wicked just going to shrug them off. There's the wave. Shoots them apart. So has separated from his team. Has not got the hit points. Will get the regen. Yellowstar gets the revive on towards him. Sinai leaps away. So has goes back in the game. It's just not enough for him. Sonic waves on Peke. Now Yellowstar, he's focused out. Rectus comes back in. Has he got the damage? No. Inhibitor goes down and they're all forced back to the Fountain Alliance. They're going to retreat. The Baron is still up, remember. They could just choose that as a target and push on whack. And again, Taps is completely untouched in these fights here. Nobody can get to him. It doesn't even matter you get Wicked low, it doesn't matter you get Shook low. Taps is just sitting in the back line, destroying you, together with Froggen, who's dancing around. He has the Outer Blast as well. Didn't even have to use it in the last fight. And this was, again, Fnatic, they knew they had to just try and engage. I mean, you can't let both your inhibitors die. Watch the enemy team take Baron as well. You might as well try one last fight here. It didn't pay off for them. Now they have to try and challenge the Baron. Well, there is the destiny used to get vision of Alliance. It sees them having the Baron already down to less than half. Cyanide on the outside is going to try and be a hero here for Fnatic when he's already taken super low. There is Shook going over, kicks him away. Tabs will finish off the kill and now Wicked diving in. He will actually be killed off. Frog and Force to use the Zonyas as well. Yellow Star getting knocked down, but he's used his ultimate on himself. Reckless has got to go big here, looking around to see which target he can go for next. Alliance are all pretty low without uh, Tab Fink factored into that one. He will actually turn around. They oh. go back in on towards Peke. Should be baited. He signed guards off at the side. And now Soa going to be pushed down. Oh my god, he survived it somehow. Shook does come through and they finally kill him off. That's a three for two up until now. Baron, of course, went to Alliance. Fnatic have to retreat with just Reckless and Yellow Star alive.
will be able to come back and defend for the minion shape. But look at the lines. They're not done yet. They want to chase him into the base, see if they can actually kill a Nexus turret. Super minion still in there. Cyanide back up in five seconds. This is risky from Alliance, honestly. They do have that Baron buff on. They want to try and pressure out Reckless. Oh, look at that. Yellow Star just gets shredded by Tabs there. They take down one Nexus doing the Aqua Prison catches. Cyanide's in trouble. He gets caught out. Teleport comes in. Wicked's going to join the party. The second Nexus turret will fall. And it's going to be Alliance. Can they get down the Nexus? Reckless sticking around around the fountain trying to keep him away but Tabs is free hitting on the side he fancies a kill hit the goddamn Nexus ignore the AD carry where are you going man he wants get MVP on the Nexus Alliance take game one wow this best of five this is going to be incredible but it's Alliance that strike first against the reigning champions in the Aura of Fnatic and looking at the picks here Fnatic's comp was so risky both expected and Reckless just had to snowball early mid game Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to team fight Alliance like we just saw here. They fell behind. They traded kills from the start. Then Fnatic realized we cannot fight for Dragon. We have to give every single Dragon to Alliance to try and take towers instead and hope Reckless can keep getting kills. As soon as Wicked stopped dying to Reckless in these one on ones, he couldn't find any more kills. Everyone else from Alliance joined in and they were just stronger from the start. I mean, Froggen and Fizz as well looked so good in this game. Slow start, but as soon as he had the chance to get some kills, he got five in a row. And Tabs, again, you said it before that although Reckless is MVP, mm -hmm. Tabs is going to want to almost steal that back from yeah. him somehow. And you saw it at the end, you were saying, hit the damn Nexus, man, where are you going? That's where he was going. He was chasing the MVP down the lane to get a bit of a bonus kill at the end. Yeah, MVP my ass is what he was thinking. Eight zero seven 7 for Tabs, that's impressive play. 4-1-2 for Reckless. They didn't really come against each other too often. They pretty much avoided each other. It's like you said, they wanted to switch away from it. We should also maybe look towards the mid lane because that's an important one. Peke, only 2-3-1. Yeah. While, of course, Re Froggen, 5-2-4, managed to find out the split push, managed to get his groove, whereas Peke seemed to be having to react every single time. He wasn't really the one making the plays. We saw one aggressive tier of ulti. He was used on Nif in the mid lane, which actually ended up backfiring with two members of Fnatic die, and they give up the first Baron to Alliance. Yeah.